In this video I'll be demonstrating how to use the Agent Git Source Control plugin to connect Power Builder to the Git Source Control system. Um, now I'm going to assume that you've actually installed the Agent Git plugin. The installation is fairly straightforward. I'm also going to assume you have Power Builder installed. So in this case I've got Power Builder 17, 2017. So if we bring up Power Builder The first thing we need is some sort of play, play around workspace. So I've, I've got a little dummy workspace created. Um, and it's just a, a workspace with a couple of projects. Now that corresponds to this folder location. So you can see at the moment there's no indication that there's source control. I actually have got uh, Tortoise Git installed. So if, if this was under source control it would indicate with a little arrow, a little uh, uh, green green tick. So what we'll go through is the steps to make it uh, bind this project, this workspace to source control. So what we do is we right click on the, we click on the um, workspace option, right click on that on the top of the workspace option and bring up the properties dialog and we go to the source control panel. And from here we can select the agent git option. Now that entry will be added by the installer so if you don't see that it means you haven't run the installation. Um, the project name isn't really important but we'll just keep it consistent as my application. Uh, one final point, um, the d this is just the default installation of Agent Git and by default it, it uses the option to mark files as read only when not checked out. That's just a convention of the Microsoft source control, common source control interface. Um, and But because of that it will actually uh, generate warning messages in Power Builder. So to stop that you, you can tick on this option. The other option is to go the other way is untick this option and then reconfigure Agent Git to not mark it as read only. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain a bit about that later on. But for now we're using the default options so we'll just suppress the, the prompts at this stage using this option here. And the final thing we need to do is actually click on this ellipse, ellipse button here with three dots on it because that will actually bring up the, the plug-in to complete the, the, the process of binding this workspace to, to Git. So we click on that and up comes our binding dialog. Now the thing that has to be correct is this, this folder location. This is the location of our um, application. Um, that has to match the actual workspace location and if you if we look at our workspace location we can see that it does. It's um, That's basically the location of our workspace. There's our workspace file. So that folder location has to match the location in the binding dialog. Uh, the project name doesn't really matter but it's just taken what was passed in. Um, so we can just go ahead and uh, accept those values and now up comes this dialog. Now this, this is basically saying that there's no Git repository at that location which is to be expected because it's a brand new project and we haven't um, initialized it with anything. We haven't cloned it from an existing repository or from, the, from GitHub for example. Um, so, so when it is a new repository, when it is a new application, you'll get this dialog. If, you'd ha if you had actually downloaded uh, or cloned, cloned a project from GitHub, naturally there would already be a repository there and you wouldn't get that message. But in this case there is no uh, repository, so we go yes and it, it'll just initialize an empty repository, f uh, empty uh, Git repository f at that location. And we just apply those changes. And we go OK. And straight away you can see that the Power Builder now knows that it's actually got, uh, it, it looks like it's in source control because it's got these plus signs. And that means that there are those items are ready to add to source control. So to do that all we do is we go, um, again once we, once again we, we, let me just do that again, click on the workspace, right click on the workspace, add to source control. And up comes this Power Builder dialog, which is basically saying, what do you want to add? We'll add everything. We go OK. And it works its way through the items. And now they're all in source control. And we can actually confirm that. If we go back to our 
uh, Power Builder project. We can see now there's the GitHub uh, Git, Git repository that was created. And you can the tick indicates that it, the, the application, my application, and all the files are now um, known to the source control. So they've, they've basically been added to Git. So what can we do from here? Yes, yeah, so, so now I've tried to change this. It says I, ha I haven't checked it out, so I, that's, that's a good idea. So I go right-click, and I can check that out, out, option out, that item out. And you can see the, the, the icon has now changed to a tick, meaning I've now got it checked out. Now I can actually go in here and start making some changes, you know, simple change. Save that. Um, if I now go and actually do a difference, for example, I can actually do a difference and it can actually, it shows that I've made this simple change. So I can keep track of the changes. If I, if I don't actually want that change, I could actually throw that change away. I could actually go undo checkout. Um, I could over I could throw it away by doing get latest. Um, but at the moment it's checked out and it's changed. Uh, I'll just confirm that. Yes, I'll just save all. So now, now we've made a change and we've got it checked out. So if we go back to our Explorer window, you can see that Git also notices that it's got a change. And if I use Tortoise Git to do the diff here, uh, it didn't seem to bring up anything. I'm not sure why. Um, uh, maybe I haven't got Tortoise Git diff set up properly. But I you can see that it's actually marked it as being changed. And I can definitely do the difference over here because I can go uh, show differences over here. And there's the change that I've made. And I can also check that in now. If I go check in, I say my first change. Um, it's now changed to a the green dot saying the checks checkout's done. And if I can also show the history now, if I bring up the history, you can see there's my first change. And I can also do a comparison of these two. And there's the difference. So basically I can I can manage my files, my checkouts, my check-ins, uh, undo checkouts, um, basically any any of these source control options um, from get latest all the way down to refresh status, they're all basically source control options and they can all be done via the, um, inside the IDE using the plugin. I'll just show you about that configuration that I was mentioning before because in here there's an option to bring up the um, run source control management tool. I think that's it. Yes, that is it. And this is the agent git configuration. And this is the option that I was talking about here. You can actually turn that off so that the files aren't marked as read only when not checked out. It's basically up to you. It's just a, an option. Um, most of those, most of those, these options, are, the, the defaults are fine. The, it, it, the, the, the installer comes with a, a git. If you don't want to use that, you just untick, untick the, that git, that option, and make sure that your git.exe is in the path. It's got some debugging options here to help with debugging. Um, you generally won't need those unless you run into trouble. They're, they're mainly for tech support. Uh, this is the difference tool that was running. You can put in your own difference tool. Uh, and then there's a, an option to handle line endings. How it should how carriage and line feeds and line feeds need to be handled, but that's basically it. That's um, that gives you a little overview on how the um, agent Git allows you know Power Builder to talk to the Git source, source control. Thank you.